My name is Seth Hoffert, and together with my co-authors Yohan, Mikael, Jill, and Rani, we will be presenting Zodiac today. So an outline of what we'll talk about. First, I will talk about what Zodiac is and what we can do with it. And then Jill will discuss security claims. Yohan will talk about the Zodiac permutation itself. And then finally, Mikael will talk about implementing Zodiac. So first of all, what is Zodiac exactly? So Zodiac is actually a rich API operating on a stateful object. This API allows everything from hashing to session-based authenticated encryption to be implemented. Zodiac is suitable for embedded devices and is also designed with side channel attacks in mind. Zodiac implements the cyclist mode on top of 12 round Zudu permutation. So what can we actually do with Zodiac? So Zodiac is an object with a persistent state. You can initialize it in either an unkeyed or a keyed mode. So some examples of unkeyed modes would be an extendable output function, a hash function, and keyed modes include stream cipher, message authentication code, or authenticated encryption scheme. The idea is that you absorb one or more arbitrary length byte strings into a persistent state, and this state really represents the digest of all the strings absorbed thus far. We refer to this digest as a history. And the object takes care of properly domain separating all of the strings and allows you to optionally combine absorption with an encryption or decryption operation. Once all of the input strings have been absorbed, you then squeeze an arbitrary length byte string. And you can also ratchet for forward security. So let's take a look at an unkeyed example. So this example implements an extendable output function. So you can see we start by initializing the cyclist object with no key. We then absorb an arbitrary byte string x and then we squeeze an n byte output. And this n byte output represents the hash of string x. What about something a little bit more complex though? What about multiple strings, for example? Again, we initialize cyclist with no key. We then absorb strings x1, x2, and x3, and then squeeze n bytes of output. This time, this output represents the hash of the tuple of strings, x1, x2, and x3, all properly domain separated. But what about a keyed use case? What about something like session-based authenticated encryption? So here we initialize the cyclist object with key k and an optional ID. And this ID serves as a diversifier. Alternatively, you can absorb a nonce string separately, as shown here. We then proceed to handle our first message, which in this case is composed of metadata string A1 and a plain text string P1. And you can see we are absorbing the metadata and then encrypting plain text P1, obtaining the ciphertext C1. We then squeeze the tag T1 and now put the ciphertext in tag and then wait for the next message to be processed. So in this example, the next message looks much the same. We have a metadata and a plain text string. We absorb the metadata, encrypt the plain text, produce the authentication tag, and then output the ciphertext C2 and the tag T2, and wait for the next message to come in. We are able to handle metadata only scenarios very efficiently, as you can see here. We absorb metadata string A3, we have no plain text, and then we immediately squeeze tag T3. Likewise, we can handle plain text only scenarios as well. So in this case, we encrypt plain text P4, obtaining ciphertext C4, and then squeeze tag T4, returning output ciphertext C4 and tag T4. And we repeat this process for as many messages as we wish to handle. Zodiac provides 
multiple ways of mitigating side channel attacks. One such, one such way is through the use of sessions. So if you consider the keyed mode of a session-based authenticated encryption scheme, the secret state is a moving target. With each string that you absorb, the state changes. There is no long-lived key. In addition, the cyclist object supports an optional counter parameter. This counter parameter serves as a nonce, except that it is absorbed in a special way. It is actually absorbed in a trickled manner. And this trickling reduces the degrees of freedom that the attacker has. We also support ratcheting and rolling subkeys. Let's take a look at how rolling subkeys might work. So in this example, we initialize Zodiac instance with key ki, but then right after that, we squeeze next key ki plus one and replace key ki with it. We can then perform an optional ratchet, and then we can, for example, absorb metadata ai, encrypt plain text pi, obtain ciphertext ci, squeeze the authentication tag ti, and then output the pair ciphertext and tag, and wait for the next message. We increment the counter and repeat this process as many times as needed, each time squeezing a new key. And now Jill will discuss security claims. Thank you, Seth. So indeed, I'm going to talk about the security claim we made on Zodiac. So overall, we wish to have 128 bits of security. So the underlying permutation, Zudu with 12 rounds, we assume it's strong enough so that Zodiac can reach the generic security level, that is, the generic security of the cyclist mode. So let me now discuss the generic security of cyclist. So a cyclist object can be initialized in either unkeyed mode for hashing or keyed mode. In this case, for unkeyed mode, cyclist is actually equivalent to the sponge construction. So with 256 bits of capacity, we can reach a security level of 128 bits against any attack, unless easier against a random Moroccan. When switched to the keyed mode, cyclist reduces to the security of the full state key duplex construction. So this construction is similar to the original duplex construction, the main difference being that now input blocks can be stored into the entire state. So output blocks are still taken only from the first R bits, so the outer part of the state, but nevertheless, the input blocks can modify the entire state of this object. Another difference is that the input blocks can override the first R bits instead of being sold. Though the analysis of this construction was done in these two papers, and the assumption we need to make on the permutation is not that the permutation behaves like an ideal permutation. Actually, a sufficient condition is that this permutation behaves as a PRP, a pseudo-random permutation, when the, at the input and the output, the last C bits are blinded with some secret value. So this should be in, undistinguishable from a random permutation. A similar condition applies to what happens at initialization when the secret key is absorbed together with the first bits. So for Zodiac, what we did is simply to write down the security bound we have on the um, full state key duplex construction, and we just adapted it to the parameters of Zodiac. So the bound looks a bit complicated. Let me illustrate it with a couple of use cases. So first use case, is authenticated encryption. So in this case, I'm just going to focus on the nominal um, behavior, that is, it uses nonce, there is no nonce repetition and no leakage of unverified decrypted ciphertexts. Also, there is only a single secret key, and this secret key has kappa bits, kappa up to 192. So we look at the security level for integrity and confidentiality, and we divide the security into the time complexity or computation complexity, or again, offline complexity on the one hand, and on the other hand, on the data complexity or online complexity. And you can see using on that these expressions uh, for a 128-bit secret key that we can reach the 128-bit security level 
both for offline and online complexities. We can even go higher than 128 bits if we use um, a larger key. So what happens in the case of a non-misuse? So for the first blocks that two plain texts differ, you will be able to see the difference. And then after that, the key stream uh, will diverge. This is it's the same behavior as for any other um, duplex based authenticated encryption mode. Now, let's assume that there is no nonce or there is a massive nonce misuse or there is release on, of unverified decrypted ciphertexts. In that case, the ad adversary has more degrees of freedom. Nevertheless, the keys should still be protected and integrity should still be guaranteed. However, given these extra um, degrees of freedom, the security bound decreases somehow, but not dram dramatically. In terms of offline complexity, we can still reach 128 bits of security, and for data complexity, to the power 64 blocks. Another um, use case to illustrate the bound is multi-target attacks. So multi-target attacks are accounted for in this term, QIV times N over 2 to the kappa. So here kappa is again uh, the key size in bits, n is the time complexity, and QIV is the number of keys for which we use the same IV. So clearly, QIV is upper-bounded by u, the number of users, and the security can degrade by at most log u bits. What we can do to compensate is to increase the key size by log u bits, and if we do that, we can restore the security level we had for sig single target attacks. Another way to address multi-target attacks using Zodiac is to enforce the use of a unique key identifier. So each key has an ID, and this ID is absorbed um, at initialization. So in that case, if we do that, QIV is guaranteed to be always one, and there is no degradation of security against multi-target attacks, and no need to increase the key size. So that's all I wanted to say. Next, Johan is going to talk about the Zulu permutation. Thank you, Jean. We made the Zulu permutation public now three years ago at the ECC uh, workshop in Nijmegen here in 2017, in November exactly. And um, the Zulu permutation was inspired and triggered by that of Gimli. And Gimli is designed by a team of 11 people. I will not uh, read their names, there's too many of them. And Gimli did a very good job at um, being efficient on a wide range of platforms and that was because of its the size of its uh, state namely uh, 384 bits that you can encode as 12 32 bit words and we found that a very good idea because in Ketchak F we only had Ketchak F 400 that came near this but this had a native word size of 16 bits and was not so suited for 32 bit CPUs. So we decided to build a permutation that has a state like that of Gimli, but we were not such a big fan of the round function of Gimli. So we built a round function that's much closer to that of Ketchak, or in particular, the round function of Ketchak F, the permutation underlying Ketchak. Um, if we look at the state of Zulu uh, at the bottom of the slide, we see that it consists of three so-called planes, uh, parallel planes, horizontal planes, that where each plane is a rectangular array of 4 by 32 bits. So instead of on the figure, it's, it's kind of a toy version with 8 instead of 32, but you get the idea. Uh, you can also see it as a rectangular array of columns, where columns consist of 3 bits, and each bit of a column is in one plane. So the zero rank function operates on this state and has 5 steps. The nonlinear step is key. And it's the same key that we find in Ketchak F or in Subterranean, but in this case it operates on 3-bit units. And these 3-bit units are the columns. So you can consider it as the parallel application of 3-bit S boxes on 128, bit, on 128 columns. Theta, the mixing layer, is a column parity mix, also similar to that of Ketchak F. Uh, first we compute uh, the parities of all columns and put them in a plane same shape as the other planes, called P, and then we build the so-called that effect plane by taking two copies of the parity plane and shifting them over different offsets. And then we add it to the, two, to the three planes of the state. So you see that 
C and theta, they mix a lot, they, they let bits within a column interact a lot and not so much outside the columns. So if we want to break this column alignment, we put in between theta and C, we put a, a bit transposition that moves bits in a column to different columns. And that's rho west. Basically, we do this by just shifting plane one and plane two over different offsets. And that's comparable to the composition of rho and p in Kerchak F. And then we do the same between C and rho of the and theta of the next round. And that's rho east, where we do a similar kind of operation. And that's something we do not have in Kerchak F. And then finally, we add a round constant just before C to kill the symmetry. So to evaluate the cryptographic strength of these permutations that uh, uh, come from this round function, we look at trail bounds. And trail bounds are relevant in differential cryptanalysis and linear cryptanalysis, but they say also something about the general diffusion. And what's relevant in differential cryptanalysis is the maximum differential probability over all possible differentials delta n, delta out. And in linear cryptanalysis, the maximum correlation over all possible uh, linear approximations uh, defined by masks u in and u out. And in Zulu, for a limited number of bounds, uh, we actually claim that the maximum dp of a differential is closely approximated by a maximum dp over the trails. And this is much easier to investigate because finding it for differentials is quite hard. And similar in linear cryptanalysis, we can look at linear trails. And what we uh, report on is not the dp or the correlation, but the weight. And where the weight is the minus the log 2 of the dp. Or basically, if the dp is 2 to the power x, then the weight will be x. So now let's take a look at what the bounds are for trails over a number of rounds of Zulu. And we compare actually with Ketchak F400, the member of the Ketchak family, Ketchak F uh, permutation family that is closest to Zulu in size, actually quite close. And we see already that for three rounds, Zulu performs quite a lot better. So it has um, a minimum weight 36, while Ketchak F400 only has minimum weight 24, both for linear and differential trails. So that's 50% better. If you look for four rounds, we see there are two numbers, the, and we know that the minimum weight is somewhere in that interval. So for instance, for Ketchak F400 for four rounds, we see this number 48. That means that we scanned the whole space up to weight 48, and we did not find any trails. But we did find the trail of weight 63, so that it cannot be larger than that. It is somewhere in that interval. And we see immediately that in Zulu, these numbers are quite a lot higher. And for linear, dif linear trails, the difference is even bigger. And we see this trend uh, goes on for uh, 5, 6, and 12 rounds, where for these number of rounds, we don't have tight bounds. So we know uh, a lower bound on the minimum, number, minimum weight, but we don't know exactly what it is. But we see that we can investigate Zulu quite a lot further into the weight uh, scale than uh, Ketchaka. So you can see, with respect to trail bounds, that Zulu is a great improvement over Ketchak F400. Let's now take a look at third-party cryptanalysis. So there is not so much third-party cryptanalysis of Zodiac yet, and which is quite understandable because it has only been published recently. But there is a lot of third-party cryptanalysis of Kia Ketchak and Ki Ketchak. Actually, it started in 2009. And we report on all the attacks on a page on our website. I invite you to have a look. The strongest attacks are uh, cube attacks that exploit the low algebraic degree. Because if you have R rounds of the Ketchak F round function, then you only have a degree 2 to the power R. And these, most of these attacks, they can be transposed easily to Zodiac. So you can easily say, ah, oh, we can see this attack, look at the details. Yeah, it kind of transposes to Zodiac. And this gives already a lot of understanding in what we can expect. So there have been two papers that have dedicated to on Zodiac. Uh, one is by Song and Guo and was published in 2018. And the other is by Zhou et al. And it appeared in 2019, so quite recently. And both attacks 
um, they address Zodiac with uh, Zulu with a reduced round version to six rounds instead of the nominal 12 rounds. And what we actually see for the complexities of the attack is what we would expect, at least what we were expecting. So there are no surprises yet, let's say. So we think that the security of Zodiac is well understood. We have that impression. But of course, all cryptanalysis remains welcome. That's it for Zulu and the cryptanalysis. Now I give the word to Mikael, who will explain about implementing Zodiac. Thank you, Johan. I'm now going to talk about the implementation aspect of uh, Zodiac. But uh, before giving uh, performance figures of Zodiac in software and hardware, I will give you some advantages that we think are quite unique to Zodiac when it comes to lightweight application. So when you design a lightweight application, it doesn't make sense to look, for instance, at the cost of a single primitive or a single services, but instead you have to look at the cost of your application as a whole. And one big advantage of using Cyclist, so the mode uh, that uh, uses Zodiac, is that it it's a mode that provides all the symmetric cryptographic services that you would need. So it provides not only authenticated encryption, but also hashing. It has a full support of sessions. You can derive keys and so on. Also, we designed Cyclist to be as compact as possible, and you can implement it in it, uh, you can implement all use cases with a very little overhead. So in all implementation in software, you can implement all the use cases that uh, Seth mentioned in the first part with only uh, while using only 52 bytes of RAM. And so this means that we don't even need a uh, message queue, for instance, thanks to the streaming mode of uh, Cyclist. And you could compare, for instance, these 52 bytes to, uh, for instance, in most AES mode, you would need at least 48 bytes of RAM uh, only for the mode part. So one other advantage of uh, Zodiac in lightweight is that the underlying primitive Zudu can be efficiently implemented. So not only the state uh, fit nicely in uh, 12 register of any 32-bit CPU, but also the run functions has a lot of symmetry, which enables circuit reuse, and also it only uses efficient logical operations, which is very interesting in hardware. Finally, uh, another advantage of Zodiac in lightweight comes also from security design. So even though uh, Zodiac targets lightweight applications, it also provides a security level of 128 bits, and we think it doesn't make sense to target this security level without also taking take into account uh, side channel attacks. And there, uh, Zodiac uh, not only uh, allows for very efficient uh, side channel countermeasures, thanks to the primitive Zudu, but also in the mode, we have designed a several features that make it stronger uh, side channel attacks. So for instance, I'm thinking about the fact that in Zodiac, the secret, so the key or the secret is constantly updated and which make it a uh, moving target and hence much more difficult to extract in the side channel. Now let's have a look at some performance figures in software. So we've implemented Zodiac on two platforms, so the Cortex M0 and M3. So on the M0, we focused on code size, so we only implemented one round in a loop. And on the M3, we focused on speed, so we unrolled the 12 rounds in a single loop. So at the top of the table, you can see the cost in cycle plus byte in hash mode. And there you see that for absorb and squeeze, the cost is uh, around 130 five cycles per byte on the M0 and 40 cycles per byte on the M3. So of course we have a difference because of the difference of implementations, but the main difference comes from the fact that on M3, all the logical operations can be combined for free with rotations, meaning that all the shift in the run functions of Zudu can be implemented for free. So for instance, the run uh, row west and the row east can be done for free. And also one limitation that explains the difference. And one limitation uh, in the M0 is that although it has the same number of registers, uh, the logical instructions only works on the first uh, eight register of, of the CPU, meaning that then you have an overhead due to shuffling of register. If you move to key mode, uh, there you get much better performance. Uh, and there the difference in performance comes directly from the difference of rate uh, in key mode uh, compared to the hash mode. And he, of course, the 
you can achieve the best performance in absorb because there you get a full state uh, absorption, so the rate is maximal. But also, uh, when you consider squeeze, we can use a bigger rate because uh, and uh, we are in clean mode, and in clean mode we can get a bigger rate while also targeting the same security level. And for instance, absorb here you see we can decrease the cost in cycles per byte to 48 in absorb on the M0 and down to 40 cycles per byte uh, on the M3. As a matter of comparison, we also give the performance figures of uh, AES-138 in quantum mode from the two references below, and there you see that the comparison is strongly in favor of the of Zodiac. So we, you can get uh, our implementation in software uh, from our repository, XKCP, and uh, to which we give a URL at the end of this presentation. Now let's have a look at uh, performance on hardware. So Sylvia Mela implemented Zodiac on the hardware 40 nanometer technology. And in this case, we give only the figures for uh, the architecture on one round per, per cycle. If you want more figures, you can have a look at our update paper that we submitted to the second round of uh, the lightweight crypto competitions uh, done by NIST. And in this table, we listed uh, the performance in increasing in increasing order of area and for the smallest area, so 8.2 uh, kilogate equivalent, you can achieve 200 megahertz frequency, clock uh, clock, uh, frequency and you get at that clock frequency uh, throughput of 2.7 gigabit per second for authenticated encryption mode and 1.3 gigabit per second for hashing. So for a slight increase of area, you can see that you can increase the frequency and then the throughput you get is directly line linear in the frequency uh, increase and you can get up to 600, uh, for a frequency of 600 megahertz, you can go as high as 8.1 gigabit uh, throughput in authenticated encryption, uh, gigabit per second throughput in authenticated encryption. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for your attention. Uh, please have a look at the paper. Uh, there are much more detail in the paper, but also the complete specification of Zodiac, and you will see that they are very compact and clean. So if you have any questions, you can ask them uh, during the FSC sessions on November 9, but you can also send an email at our address, zodiac at kachak.team. Uh, please have a look to our GitHub repository, XKCP and Gazudu for the software and hardware implementation, and we give also the URL to our homepage. Thank you. Bye.